Indeed, we have met the best that Bishop Elam has ever seen. And our last inductee would be strongly considered for a list of the best athletes in the history of our state. Local TV station k called her the Athlete of the Century. She is the first athlete in the history of Iowa High School Athletics to be inducted into both the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union Basketball and Volleyball Halls of Fame. If there were a Soccer Hall of Fame, she would likely be enshrined there as well. The former Carly Tritz was selected All-State in three sports and was the Class 3A Player of the Year in both basketball and volleyball. On the basketball court, Carly would score 1,594 career points, including 610 points in a season, a city record. She would lead the Crusaders to state titles in 2008 and 2009, 10, excuse me, as well as a runner-up finish in 2009. In 2010, she was named Miss Basketball as the top female basketball player in the state of Iowa. The Omaha World Herald named her the Western Iowa Female Athlete of the Year as well. The Sioux City Journal followed suit naming Tritz the 2010 Metro Athlete of the Year. She was also a two-time first-team All-State volleyball player and holds the school record for digs in a season and is top 10 for most kills in a season. Soccer might have been where she truly dominated. The All-State soccer player once had five consecutive games with a hat trick of three goals in one game. Tritz would go on to play basketball at Creighton, and despite knee issues, she would score over a thousand points and amass a laundry list of accomplishments at Creighton as well. Chronic knee issues derailed a career that was surely destined for the WNBA. She is currently an assistant coach with the Creighton Lady Jays women's basketball program. Presenting Carly tonight is a former assistant coach, Brad Moore. I first encountered Carly Tritz as an athlete probably when she was five or six years old in three-on-three -three, uh, youth soccer. And if I remember at that time, Carly was scoring so many goals that uh, I think John actually went out and made her play goalie, even though there weren't goalies in that league. But she was a standout and uh, very athletic for a young child. I coached Carly in junior high basketball, and I remember thinking in sixth grade, that she was so athletic, she played so differently than any other girl at that age, that I thought, you know, if this girl grows a little bit, because she was about four foot nothing, I thought if she grows, she's gonna be a very special athlete. 2011 Freshman of the Year in the Missouri Valley Conference, a 5'10 guard from Sioux City, Iowa, Carly Prince of Prince. What made Carly different than most high school athletes she was a multi-sports star. Uh, she was good at everything that she did. She was very athletic, uh, very driven, and very competitive. But I think what really made her stand out is the fact that she packaged so much athleticism with such a desire to excel in multiple sports. I would say that the one competition that really stood out as Carly's Hall of Fame moment was her senior year state basketball, uh, winning a state championship to what was arguably one of the best ever 3A um, group of athletes ever in a tournament. They, they were up against some great teams, great athletes, future Division I basketball players. And I think Carly's athleticism her skills as a basketball player, uh, combined with Kulstra's uh, fast tempo style of play, um, really showcased Carly's talents. She was All-State, Miss uh, Iowa basketball, but she averaged almost 25 points, shot 65%. It was one of the most amazing tournaments by a girl basketball player. My favorite Carly Tritt story is uh, I would go back to the times when Carly was carpooling with my children and uh, my girls would get a big kick out of 
playing the radio and uh, making Carly entertain the car. So Carly knew every lyric to every song. It was highly entertaining and, and we always had a good time. My girls used to beg to carpool with Carly. It's an honor and a privilege to present Carly Berger with enshrinement into the Bishop Helan Athletic Hall of Pride. Ladies and gentlemen, Carly Berger. Um, to the committee, thank you guys so much. This is um, truly an honor and it's because I I just love Helan so much. It's, it's such a thread through my family, through the Tritt side, the Berger side. Um, the other inductees, congratulations, and I, you guys presented uh, the history of Helan and why I love it perfectly. Um, my coaches, some of them are here tonight, Sean Mansfield with soccer, Lori Slight volleyball, um, Doug Moody basketball, and Derek Booster basketball. Um, who would have thought that Helan's first state basketball championship would be coached by Doug Moody for the girls team? <laughs> right? Like, say. All the history of those teams, um, and then Doug comes back, coaches us. We were very shell-shocked um, by his coaching style at first, but without it, we wouldn't have been where we were. My mom literally had to force me out of the car my very first practice as a ball girl um, in eighth grade when I walked in there. <laughs> um, and to, to think of that and to where I'm at now, and to all the coaches, you guys pulled different things out of me. Um, as, a, as a player, a person, as a coach now, I look up to you guys uh, as mentors and I think back on things that I, I'm like, oh yeah, I, I pulled that from you. So thank you from the bottom of your heart because I know what a, the sacrifice it is to be a coach. Um, and you guys are pretty elite. I feel very lucky to be at Hill in the time I was. I felt like there were so many state championships. If you didn't win one, um, it was kind of winter, winter bust. And what a good problem to have <laughs> to be win a state championship or feel like you let your teammates or you let your, uh, your your program and your city and your school down. So I think that was an awesome pressure and problem to have and really help prepare me for other pressures in life at the next level as well. Um, one of my favorite stories, I'll just share one quickly, was at a 2008 state tournament um, when we ended up winning. Uh, Doug Moody pulled us aside or, you know, he's talking to us pregame and he's saying, okay, and he gives us our X's and O's speech. And then he goes right into, okay, I want you guys to look in the mirror. So we're all kind of looking in the bathroom mirrors at, at Wells Fargo Arena at State. And he said, um, and we weren't supposed to be in that game. We weren't supposed to win that year. We had a lot of good players, but I think we were at the five or the four seed and had made some upsets. And he said, if you guys can look in the mirror at yourselves and, and say, I gave everything I gave, that I gave my all and I tried my hardest, um, then we can come back in here, win or lose, and you guys can be proud of yourselves, and I'm going to be super proud of you. I think he had a little, little tiny tear. Uh, coaching girls made him a little soft. I don't know where he is, but <laughs> it is true. Um, so we ran back in there. We won a um, really tight game. We won by three. And I remember we sprinted back in there, and Doug's crying. Nelly, the trainer, was crying. Um, and everyone knows him, right? And we're holding the, the championship trophy, and we're looking in the mirror. And we just we knew that we just brought Hale in its first ever basketball state championship, and that was incredible. Uh, it's incredible because I remember sitting on the pit stage, trying to touch Nate Funk when he would take the ball out of bounds in front of me. Uh, I know the history of Hale. I mean, my mom had a scrapbook of uh, of Mike Corey, not just because he was good at sports. <laughs> I mean, my father-in-law, my father I played with a bunch of you guys at Spo. Uh, Phil Carpuck, obviously, a big part of your guys' lives, and I get to play volleyball with his daughter. I mean, Keelan runs deep in, in my family and, and through me, and I'm just really proud of where he came from. So this honor is its hard to put in words how much it means to me and how thankful and grateful I am for it. Um, but Keelan's more than, it's more than sports. And I, I really, really thought about that a lot, you know, what I was going to say, but it really came to fruition when um, this reporter asked me a question I had never been asked before. He was wanting to talk about this recognition. He said, would your career have been different um, if you went to a different high school? And of course, your, your reaction is, well, duh, right? I mean, you think about where else I could have gone and the success I could have had or we could have had on those teams. Um, but then I stepped back and, well, why would it have been different? And 
take out the sports. Um, it's because of people like Mr. Berger, the experience of his class. Um, Miss Dory, in that sunset picture that she knows was not very good, and she's gonna tell me it's good anyways. Um, it's Todd and Michelle, the custodians that would be out of the practices late, and I'd be shooting free those and talk with them a little bit. Um, I mean, I, I, could, I could stand up here and talk quite a bit about why he owns different. Uh, it's going to church every Tuesday morning, and then those lessons that you think you're ignoring and skipping through at church, finally hitting you 5, 10, 15 years later. Uh, so that's why it's different. Uh, my family, what healing means to you guys, that's why it's different. I agree with, with Don. I, I could, my biggest dream was I wanted to play for healing. I would, I would think about college and pro after that, but I couldn't wait to put on a healing jersey and impact the pit um, and represent everyone that's come before me. Uh, my sisters, I don't talk about you guys enough. You know, Rachel, you're a, a huge example of toughness and perseverance. And Andrea, you're a shining example of consistency and grace, things that don't get celebrated enough in the public eye. Um, my parents, John and Lisa, I know quite a bit of you in the room know them, and I honestly don't have enough time to talk about you. <laughs> but thank you. Um, and so to continue that answer about healing, it's also a great place to meet a spouse. <laughs> um, and my life began when we got married and had Luke and Nate. And you're the best part of me and you always have been. So there's a million moments, a lot of them are already shared, so I don't want to be repetitive, but I, I think I can speak for everyone when I say it's not just my career, but my life would have been a lot 